the title of my book, Failure, The Federal Miseducation with a K, I use the common core spelling for miseducation <laughs> of America's children. I have a very different view about the supposed purity of the DC stream house, you know, pouring on us states. And it's very interesting, even though uh, I am a research fellow at the Independent Institute, headquartered in Oakland, California, I do not live in California. <laughs> My husband and I and uh, four stepchildren live in Arizona, which is at the same time, I think, recently hailed by the Wall Street Journal as the national leader in parental choice and education. Name a public homeschool, non-public school option. Not only do we have it, chances are we are first to have it. Uh, so not only are we a school choice leader, but Arizona also has the very dubious distinction of being I believe the only state in the country to have rebranded Common Core not once, but twice. So you can see here, this is not, it, when we talk about education reform, it's not simply about school choice. It's parental choice. At its core, school choice is a parent's rights issue. And in my opinion, uh, the par a parent's right to direct the upbringing and education of their children is fundamental and we don't need permission from government to raise our own kids or let parents raise their own kids. So it's interesting that during the presidential election just how many calls there were for the ab actual abolition of the Department of Education. Um, and if you look at the history of not just the U.S. Department of Education but bureaucracies in general, they're not like fine wines. They absolutely do not improve with age. But let's just, you know, summarize what the U.S. Department of Education was, what was, was supposed to do, what we were promised. It was supposed to do three basic things. Improve student achievement, supplement, not supplant, state and local efforts. And number three, I can't say this with a straight face, I'm going to try. Number three, improve the management and efficiency of federal education programs. Okay. Let's start with number one. Achievement across all grade levels and subjects on the nation's report card. This is administered um, by the U.S. Department of Education, as well as various international tests, has been essentially flat. As far as I can tell from the empirical track record, which dates back to the 60s, we are spent simply spending above average amounts for squarely average performance. We're spending about one-third more on average than top performing countries. By the way, it's a complete myth that the U.S. was ever number one in anything. We're not going to get back to some mythical golden age. What we are is we are staying flat right here in the middle. And as more and more countries take these international tests, we're not moving. They're getting better, so we go down in the ranks. That is what's happening. Now, surely we've achieved, though, promise number two a better quote-unquote partnership between the federal government and the states thanks to the Department of Education, right? Now, wrong. During the No Child Left Behind era, for, for example, from 2002 to 2009, the Department of Education's paperwork burden increased by an estimated 65 percent and was larger than the burdens imposed by the Departments of Defense, Energy, and Justice, just to name a few. In fact, the administrative burden is now so great, most employees at state education departments are hired just to deal with federal program mandates. Today in the Common Core era, states are spending an estimated $80 billion, according to a former U.S. Department of Education official, nearly 20 times the entire 4.4 race to the top program that was supposed to incentivize state reforms. But with all these quote-unquote education experts in D.C., certainly the department has achieved number three, improved management and efficiency of federal education programs. Okay, here we go. We can do this. After a full 30 years in operation, because we, you know, you need a five years or so to work out those pesky kinks, the Government Accountability Office, which is the official government watchdog, found that the Education Department was one of a dozen or so federal agencies operating nearly 300 social education and training programs and that no uniform definition of an education program even exists at the federal level. Here's an update on that point. I came across that in 2010. My mind was blown. But just in updating some information from the book saying, hmm, I wonder what the official definition is for federal education program 
you know, now, here in 2017. Well, I, I'm very happy to report that we've made tremendous progress. There were blue ribbon panels, expert committees, and this month we are going to actually come up to decide whether or not we have a rubric for defining within the next 10 years or so what a federal education program <laughs> is. So we're, we're getting right to work on that. Okay, well, it, it gets even worse. The Office of Management and Budget found that just 6% of Department of Education programs earned its highest rating of effective, 6%. The vast majority of programs were deemed not performing or ineffective. Now, here's a, here's a problem with that. If you, don't, you can't even define a program, what do you think your rubrics are like for measuring its effectiveness? When I first got that statistic, that was in, uh, I think I last viewed that in 2012. That's from 2010. They've had to shut that whole thing down. Why? Because you can't, you can't define programs. Nobody agrees on effectiveness. So, eh, we don't know, but we do know we need more money because it's for the children. Basically, it's highly likely that more time, more fiddling with the org chart, or funneling more money through the U.S. Department of Education is really going to improve education in the United States. Thankfully, by the way, U.S. Representative Thomas Massey of Kentucky has introduced a one-sentence long bill. Who, who does that in Congress? <laughs> a one-sentence long bill stating, quote, the Department of Education shall terminate on December 31st, 2018. Here, 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 here. By the way, we can do this, and I'm going to summarize that thick book and just, we, we can kill the Department of Education in two steps. Number one, how would you like your share of some $14 billion back right now? All we do is just shutter up the building on Maryland Avenue. We just shutter it up, shut off the lights, and give, give the folks who are not operating programs their pink slips. We don't kill one single program. We simply return the money back to the states, and we decide to pay for it or not. This is eminently doable. But this downgrading, block granting, all this, we did it at Reagan, and then from administration to administration. If we leave the Department of Education, which has been in existence since 1867, intact, we may like what President Trump is doing. We may like what Secretary DeVos is doing. And I think she gets a bad rap in a lot of ways. What I'm concerned about is what the next Obama or Elizabeth Warren is going to do with the department. We need to kill it once and for all because as we'll be discussing, there are now 61 non-public parental choice programs in the states. They are having tremendous success in terms of high school graduation rates, college attendance rates, college completion rates, all at a fraction of what we're told we should be spending. And if you want to know about some of the successes, just in seller dweller in terms of spending my state and home state of Arizona, which only was, which spends about $2,500 less per pupil than you do in Illinois, we're leading the way, particularly children we're told couldn't possibly learn or couldn't possibly excel in school. It is absolutely possible to end the U.S. Department of Education, but it is up to us not to accept half measures and tolerate it. This is not, we have a U.S. Department of Education, not because of some vast left-wing conspiracy. Newt Gingrich voted for it. Uh, a lot of prominent Republicans voted for it. We know enough now. It's time to get the feds out of our children's classrooms and out of our wallets and start making education a local issue as it was always intended to be. Thank you very much.